I want to bring in Stephanie Grisham, who we all just saw and heard on stage, former aide in the uh, Obama, in the in the Trump White House, yeah. uh, working with uh, the the um, the first lady, the then first lady Melania Trump. I wrote down what you said, Stephanie, and I want to read it back to you because I tried to get my phone fast enough to record it because this is some truth telling. You said behind the scenes, Donald Trump mocks his supporters. He calls them basement dwellers. Wow. Yeah. Say more. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's just true. And I felt like, you know, I spent six years with him and I really did believe in him at the beginning. And I really wanted people to know what he's like behind the cameras because it's all he cares about is when he's in front of the cameras. And so I just if I can reach any independents out there or Republicans out there to understand that I get it. I get what it was like to believe in him. I get it. But I just want people to know that this is who he really is behind the scenes. And what was compelling? I mean, I've talked to people, um, Republicans, who, like you, believed in Donald Trump. And, and one person was just honest with me and said they liked the fact that he was a celebrity. And mm -hmm. they felt the Democrats always had the celebrities. And they liked it that he was famous. Mm -hmm. And what was it that made him compelling to you initially? So I joined the campaign two weeks after he came down that escalator, and it was because I went to, I just worked at one of his rallies as a favor to somebody, and, you know, the way the crowd reacted to him and the way that he spoke so plainly, he didn't use just the political jargon that everybody used. He was like, a politician. Yeah, he was like a breath of fresh air, which really makes me sad to say that right now, but at yeah. the time... Um, and then and then I just kept going, and I kept seeing the people's reaction to him, and I thought, well, maybe if we can smooth out his kinks. Um, <laughs> yeah. There were a lot of kinks. I mean, and, yeah. and you talked about your disillusionment. Obviously, yeah. January 6th was a big part of that. Yes. But for you, and because there's so many Republicans that are here. I mean, I just spoke with the, you know, the mayor of Mesa, Arizona. He's yeah. a whole Republican. It's my home state. Yeah. yeah. And, and people are being welcomed so warmly here. There's not any judgment here. This yes. is like, come to the cookout, right? People come to the party. So How does that feel for you? It's, it's, I don't understand it. Because for me, the last, you know, five, well, four years since I've been out of office has just been, it's just been hate and hate and hate yeah. coming at me, but also just watching him as a citizen. And it's just, you know, nothing's good without me. The country's terrible. Everything's bad, but only I can fix it. And so this is just, it's joyful. Of course, that's a word everyone's using, but um, it's really unifying. And I believe that the Democrats here are understanding that we've got to come together and we're not going to agree on policies, period, probably. Yeah. But we've got to talk to each other like humans again. Yeah. And, and Claire, look, the, the, I met a guy last night uh, at, when we got back to the hotel who talked about the idea of this as a family reunion. And then we just heard Jamie Harrison use that same language because a family is full of people who think all sorts of different things, may feel different ways, but they all get along and love each other. The family reunion theme definitely feels like the vibe right now. Yeah, because we all have somebody in our family that sometimes we want to strangle them, right? Because we disagree with them. <laughs> but we're not going to actually do it. <laughs> right. But uh, on the other hand, at least I'm so glad you feel what I think is sincere in the Democratic Party, and that is we can go from Bernie and AOC to Joe Manchin. We yes. really can. And even though there are times we get really frustrated with Joe Manchin, but we, we can. And the idea that we are trying to reach out, I do not for the life of me understand why Donald Trump has never seen the need to reach out to people. I mean, he never really asked the Haley voters to support him. He never really asked the DeSantis voters to support him. And that's in his own party, much less asking Democrats who, you know, to come to his side. What is that he, about his psyche that he is unwilling to ask people to join his because movement? Because he doesn't think he needs anybody. You know, he wants to be an elected king. He wants to be, you know, an autocratic government where everything he says goes and everyone falls in line, whether it's in, the, in, in Congress, in the DOJ, as we know, uh, the military. He doesn't want to, to have people join him. He wants people to just do what he says. Yeah. Um, and again, that was something I watched him evolve into, I have to say. I don't know in the beginning he even had that way of thinking, but I watched him evolve as he learned about the power he had. And I watched it just happen over time. And at, at the end, he became just a tyrant. And truly, it was just, don't question me. We're just gonna do it, what I wanna do. And, you know. Can you talk about the outreach that the Harris Walls team made to you? And kind of, what was that process like? What brought you in the door? 
Well, I had been talking to some people um, prior to Biden stepping down uh, about the possibility of endorsing him. I knew that um, as somebody who had been around Trump for so long again, that I probably had a good voice and could speak out. And I wanted it to be impactful, though. So finally, when the Republicans for Harris came to me and they asked me if I would be involved, I you know, jumped at the chance. And um, everybody I've worked with on the campaign has been fantastic and welcoming. And um, it's just such a breath of fresh air having worked in a campaign and in an administration that I worked in before. And um, it's just been, it's truly been wonderful. And, I mean, and for, for people who feel uncomfortable as you did with Donald Trump and the way that he behaves. And, and by the way, we've talked about this. We can tell that he has contempt for his supporters. Like, I think anyone watching can tell that he does not have a great deal of respect for his followers. No. But when somebody comes to that realization, what does that conversation look like? To say it's okay to, you don't have to vote for him. You can vote the other way. It's hard. Um, it's hard to admit you were wrong. It's hard to admit you were so, so wrong. And so I try to say that to people. Like, look, I get it. I understand, but I'm telling you what he's like and look, Go behind that voting booth. It's a private place and vote your conscience. Right. And I really believe a lot of people, especially Republican women, are going to vote uh, for, for Kamala, but maybe not tell their husband. You know what? I, I really believe that. And I think it's your courage. And if, make no mistake about this. Uh, everybody needs to understand that what you're doing is courageous. Yeah. You will get loads of hate from lots of places. Then it will yeah. be very, very hard. So. Kudos to you and your bravery, but your you. bravery allows people that maybe aren't so brave to quietly, like you said, go in the voting booth and say, well, you know, if That's Stephanie it. Grisham, who is that close to him, it's private is saying this, there. I could do this by, in my own private little yep. voting booth. I, I really could vote believe for something that's going to happen. I think Trump. she's got the silent vote this time. I yeah. really believe she'll have it. And do you think that, you know, because to me, I feel like Dobbs changed so much. That it, it fundamentally changed the equation for people who might have thought they had the luxury to stick with Trump before, especially women and yep. any man who cares about women. Yeah. Do you feel that it was profound in that way, that Dobbs changed things? Absolutely. And I tell you what, um, I, I live in Kansas now, in a very small town in Kansas. And um, Kansas overturned, you know, they, they voted to have women's choice be put back into the state constitution. And to see that in such a conservative state was really interesting. And I think that that was a big deal. I think absolutely you're right. Like, I think women across the country realized their very freedoms were going to be taken away. And I think the Harris campaign has been brilliant at bringing in people who talk about, you know, it's not it's not like we're using abortion as birth control necessarily. Yeah. I think that that, you know, yesterday the speaker was absolutely important. And I think that it just shows how short-sighted and short-minded um, and misogynistic, frankly, Trump and Vance both are. And